Yeah, it is. Um, Len was our last remaining surviving Kulthpilly veteran. Um, and it's great for us to be able to honour an occasion such as that. And We never compare ourselves to war heroes in any way, but um, the occasion is always nice to be able to just reflect and acknowledge and put footy into perspective for a night. Fairly say where the opposition is at this week, that it's a, an absolute must win. Yeah, I, I, uh, I suppose you could say that. In, footy, in a footy sense, we're in the trenches a little bit. 0-4 uh, is not a good start, and we all want to win. Our members and fans want to win, um, and our players are hungry uh, to sing a song after a game and really play some good footy. But we feel over the last four weeks, each week has been a progressive build. Um, and on the weekend, there were some exciting signs about where our club's going with our football, uh, and clearly some areas still to work on. Is there a sense that you're playing a little bit better than yeah, I think, to quote Ross, it's never as bad or it's never as good. Um, I've played in games where we've won and not felt like we've played as well as what we did against North Melbourne on the weekend. So we're in the business of winning games of footy and that's what we want to do. Um, but it's not um, all doom and gloom around here at the moment. So how do you strike a balance between you've scored more than 100 points in two games, but mm. you can see like you've never conceded under Ross? How do you strike a balance? Yeah, if we knew that, then uh, we probably wouldn't be 0-4. I think we have to pay a bit of a tax um, for adapting our game plan and trying to score more because that's the way modern footy's going. And I think with the interchange rotations, players spending more time on the ground and players spending more time resting, uh, the game has changed. And uh, a lot of teams have adapted really well to that. And our attacking model is certainly trending that way, but we're leaking heavily in our defence. Uh, and that's a full 18-man issue. Um, but we'll continue to tighten up on that. Those in structures or volumes? Because you guys are actually fourth, I think, in points conceded from turnovers, which is a big problem, but there's been some structural issues as well with their bit of both. Yeah, clearly your ball use links into your defence. Uh, if you turn it over and don't use it well, particularly in the back half, then you're going to get scored heavily against. So um, uh, it's a double-edged sword. We've got to use the ball better. If we do that, we'll score more, but we'll also stop the opposition scoring. So. Um, as the messaging has been for the last couple of weeks, progressively getting better and adapting to a new model. Nat, Ross has said the centre square setup has changed over the pre-season. How different is it this year compared to years gone by? Uh, it's a little different. Centre square structure doesn't just involve the guys in the circle and around the outside. It's uh, Again, it's full 18 men. It's our defence, it's our forwards. Um, and we've made some tweaks, which hopefully in the long run will help us score more. Now with Aaron going out of the team, uh, for a number of weeks we're going to have to uh, change that again slightly just to accommodate our different ruckmen and uh, and again we've got to build some continuity with our ruckmen and our backup ruckmen and our midfielders um, to get some consistency of performance when we I think we kicked five goals out of the centre square which is a pretty good turnaround but we conceded a few as well uh, and when the game was up for grabs we were poor um, so we'll have a good look at that area this week. You say the continuity how hard is it because Aaron missed round ones you have Zach there then Aaron's back and now you've got Jonathan in there as well. Is, is that an underlying factor as well that it's chopping and changing mm. every week? Yeah, it presents a challenge. Once you get into in the in-season model, it's hard to train. Um, guys are heavily focused on recovery and so our ability to train with a new ruckman it gets harder and harder. So um, we're going to have to adapt on the run. What about clearances? I think you're the third least clearance side in the competition. That was such a strength in years gone by. Has it taken you a little bit by surprise how, I guess, quickly it's... Uh, I, I'm not really across all the numbers. I know we've got one of our key centre square bounce and clearance players out. One of our clear, key clearance players out and David Mundy at the moment. Um, but Lockie Neal is standing up. We've got a few others that need to really take up that slack, but uh, it's not where we want to be statistically. Now, how do you think that the side's running out games against West Coast and then against North Melbourne, unfortunately scored against quite early in the last quarter? With the changes in each change of cap and that sort of thing, do you think the team's... Uh, I think so, yeah. I don't. I actually think that the game... Um, it's definitely not easier, but the running is certainly different than it was in the previous years where midfielders particularly came on and off the ground like ice hockey players. Um, and perhaps you could argue that our players haven't adapted as well to the changing of the interchange cap, but that's certainly not an excuse or a reason. Um, all clubs have... I've had to deal with it. I think against West Coast we were good for a half and against North we were good for three quarters. Um, 
and the great hope is going forward we can play a full game. With structures, has this Freo team probably more than any other team had to make changes to the new rules? You mentioned even change cap and also the deliberate out of bounds. Do you think Freo has to have made more changes than maybe one of the other teams in the comp? Uh, absolutely not. Is that in the as well? Uh, I think so. I think it's listed as a test. Is that correct, Luke? I think he'll, he'll, he'll be a test, train, um, try and tick the boxes and get up. How hard has it been for him, obviously, to the guy who's from the <coughs> I haven't spoken to him directly about that. Uh, with his job as a leader, um, he's able to lead when he's not playing as well, uh, and he has strong involvement still around the club. Um, but he'll be itching to get back out and perform because that's what he does best. Matthew Pavish has praised the growth in your leadership. Do you feel like that's something that's developed? in the first few weeks of the season, particularly with the same struggling? Yeah, I think uh, under adversity uh, you really grow and, and this is an opportunity for me and Michael Barlow and Cam Sutcliffe and our broad base of leaders to really grow where circumstances aren't great for our footy club at the moment. Um, and I'm taking that challenge on. I'm enjoying that challenge um, and look forward to hopefully leading the game, uh, leading the team for a, a number of wins throughout the rest of the season. You yes, enjoy it? You've been happy with your form to start the year. I think you're averaging more than 25 touches and you're leading the club in goal kicking as well, so it seems as though you're striking that balance with midfield and forward time well. Yeah, on the back of um, the changing and the inter interchange, my role has adapted a little bit. I'm playing more time as a genuine forward and as you saw on the weekend, when there's a hard lockdown tag, um, it gives me an opportunity to free myself up a little bit and gets Matthew Pavlich, who's a great uh, midfield player in his own right. Uh, involved in the play more. I think Ross said it's sort of a little bit up to you to make that decision when you do go forward. Is that the way it's been happening at the moment? Have you been calling the shots? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. There's talk, uh, Matt, about the, the, given the position you're in, the need to regenerate the list for a player like yourself uh, at the peak of your powers or near to. How does that debate sit with you? I haven't really heard much of that commentary, to be honest. But about some, there's obviously some young players that have been fed into the Uh, yeah, I don't think regenerate is the right word to use. I think that we'd be foolish not to try and adapt and add new players as we go. Um, we've been competitive for the last four years, I think making the, t the top four in three occasions. But we haven't won a premiership, so we need to find new avenues to score and new players. And by drip feeding young guys in like Langdon and Weller, um, Darcy Tucker's not far away, uh, th this will make our club better. Your emotions any different? You're used to winning at this footy club. And um, yeah, I mean, emotion is pretty irrelevant when it comes to performing. Um, we just use the results to get back to work. We um, review every game very similar. If we, we think we were 10 straight or 9 straight last year, and we're reviewing the games exactly the same as what we have been at 0 4 this year. So, as a professional footy club, not much changes internally. Now, how's Sandy going? Um, as good as can be expected after a pretty significant surgery. He was wandering around with a grin on his face the other day, but um, yeah, he'll attack his rehab, as we know he, he will, and, and hopefully get back and play some good footy at some stage. You touched on it earlier, but the move amongst the group it is still pretty good. Uh, I think it's hard to... Um, it's hard to define the mood amongst the group, so to speak. As I said, we're a very level footy club, and all footy clubs are the same, whether you're 10 up, 10 straight, or 0-4, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we'll attack uh, the review the same way, as if we won or lost. What are you hoping to get out of the rest of the season? Do you have yeah. goals that have changed at all? Oh, win every game would be great. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as setting expectation, that doesn't change. Um, we understand we're in a phase of our footy club where we're trying to adapt and grow for the long-term benefit. Um, and to achieve a sustained period of success and if that means some short term pain um, then we've got full faith in the, in the coaching staff and our structure that in the long term will deliver. Now you're coming up against Patrick Cripps this week, he's a fellow West Australian and good inside player, how highly do you rate Yeah he's a quality player, um, haven't played against him too much but 
uh, yeah, a real developing player and we're going to have to put some time and effort into him. Good contested ball winner, isn't he? And probably a similar type of player to you. Do you see similarities? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. What sort of similarities do you see? Uh, contested ball play, he can mark. He's um, starting to get a fair bit of attention from opposition taggers. So, yeah, good player.